Good evening again. I just wanted to show y'all my 2 ounce tinctures of varying kinds and my 4 ounce tinctures of varying kinds that I've been working on and uh, some of these are my brothers and some of them are mine and I've gone in and I've labeled everything and I'll be making quite a few more before next Saturday the 29th and tomorrow I plan on, if it's raining, I'm going to be bagging up my loose leaves for teas and labeling them to take to the farm market. Now, because so many of you are interested in doing your own tinctures, and I encourage that, and I want you to do that, your tinctures and decoctions. I've had a couple of messages about how do I know the right amount of alcohol to use uh, for preservation now some people don't want to use alcohol you can use vinegar you can use glycerin there's many ways for you to preserve your herbal medicine now I've gotten this one and I'm going to be reading from that and I also have this one and I'm going to be reading from that as well. And it explains, sorry about knocking the camera, guys. Okay, so I'm going to read a few things about that to explain to you. Now, first of all, Jack Spierko, survivalpodcast.com, episode 1769. If you want your brain filled with important herbal knowledge, you need to go there. And you need to listen to that. It was from there that I ordered this big book. And then um, the other book, after I looked at my brother's version, I wanted my own. So, the most common way of making a tincture is by soaking an herb in a solution of alcohol and water for 14 days or more. This process is called maceration. Now... Most maceration extracts are done as a cold process, meaning they do not require heat. Now, it explains in here the weight to volume ratio to use for your alcohol and dried herbs and your alcohol and fresh plant material. And there are many different things to consider. Uh, there are plants that they call cooling and plants that they call heating and so uh, this book the modern herbal dispensatory explained that very simply that I would in a way that I was able to understand and we will be going over that as well but because this alcohol percentage is very important because right now if you got fresh plants or if you've got dry dried herbs you can stick that stuff in a jar and pour alcohol on it or water and alcohol or something and alcohol and preserve your medicinal herbs so that's why i'm bringing this to you um, the standard for most dry plants is an alcohol content of 40 to 60 percent and it's the best. And it says um, that the best ones are alcohol, vodka, that, uh, is vodka and brandy. Those are the two um, alcohols that are the best for preserving. And uh, I have, in this reading, it has been shown that brandy has been used for thousands of years to preserve herbs. So then you get into the fresh plants and that percentage of alcohol is going to go up to 70% or higher. But it's important that you get your ratio of plant material to alcohol so that it's the best it can be. Now that's if you are one of those precise people and it's really important to you. Uh, me, I am one of those intuitive people. Everything I do almost is by intuition. And there's actually even a, a se section in this large book that says the sensual approach 
to successful tincturing and er other methods of herbal extraction. And it gives you step by step, but then it goes and says, Now, use your common senses. Smell your finished extract. Draw some of it into a glass dropper. Observe closely its color. Put a drop or two of it on your tongue and taste it. Maybe the maybe it it's yucky. Well, maybe it's not a yucky that's bad and repulsive. Maybe it's just like, eh, it doesn't taste the best. Or maybe it's, oh, that's just okay. But uh, also, if your settled extract does not remain cloudy, um, if it smells and tastes like the plant it was derived from, those are things that you feel your way through. In, in cooking down this wild lettuce for the decoction, uh, you see a lot of stuff on YouTube, and it shows you uh, that the decoction needs to be a dark, almost inky brown color. Well, some of my cereola, uh, no matter how far down I cooked it, was still kind of a light brown. Well, I just decided to go ahead and use it. Well, it was fine. It's absolutely fine. It did what it was supposed to do. Relax me, help me sleep, and take my pain away. Now, somebody had asked me what kind of pains I have and why I hurt. I had a spinal surgery when I was 15. I have a steel rod um, gr uh, grafted onto my spine, the middle of my spine. Well, you know how as you age, those... Um, the cartilage in between your spine starts kind of settling. You know, it's not as thick and spongy as when you're young. Well, what has happened has been the area above where the spinal graft is and below where the spinal graft is, those sections of spine have compressed even more. And so there are times when it's just painful and the last couple of days it has been I can barely turn my head and I've been massaging and I've been sleeping certain ways and stretching I, I know the things to help but you know what's helped especially when I'm at work and it's hurting and I have to turn my head to look at monitors out windows and watch things so my you, you know the term head on a swivel well, that's what I have to do every day for eight hours, minimum. So, my neck and the ability to move it and not have pain is very important. Well, these last few days it's been very painful. Well, I have my little bag of leaves that I carry with me to work. And I chew on them if it starts hurting too bad. Now, I can deal with a certain amount of discomfort. But this is when it's so painful that when I when I turn my head, I cry out like, "Oh, okay." So so that's that that's an alarming pain right there. I wasn't expecting that. So it's a little too much for me to then focus on my work and continue on and not be a psychotic, crazy, screaming, ranting woman at my sweet, wonderful drivers. Some of my real butts though. Uh, but anyway. Uh, back to my pain so there's been these storms that have been coming in the barometric pressure has risen and fallen dramatically well that's kind of flared it up so I've been using it and I sleep well and I wake up rested and I'm not in pain and then I take my little leaves while I'm at work and then that gets me through three or four more hours and then that kind of wears off and I take a few more little bits of leaf and then I'm fine. So that is my most common pain. So I was sharing that. But the alcohol mix in with the plants and I'm going to say this one more time then I'm going to cut this off because I've got more videos planned is for dry plants, dried material the alcohol content should be 40 to 60 percent alcohol. Now, now that's the alcohol that you purchase. That's that's not the actual volume because once you pour it in, then there's a whole nother uh, formulation for 
how, how much plant material and then how much alcohol and then how much water if you do want to dilute it. Now then the fresh plant material needs to be 70% alcohol or more. So that's when you get into the Everclear pure grain alcohol. I'm going to be going to a local shine maker here in Lincoln County in the morning and I'm going to purchase some of his moonshine and this is a commercial distillery so this isn't this isn't somebody's shack behind the barn down in the holler this is a distillery with a man that I went to high school with so I'm going to purchase some of his and if it's if it's nice tasting I'm going to start sponsoring his product on my videos when we're doing tinctures so I wanted to tell you I'm going to repeat it one more time because y'all know how I wander around and I'll put this in the description so y'all don't have to listen to my whole entire video. 40 to 60 percent alcohol for dry plant material, 70 percent and higher for fresh plant material. Okay, and until the next video, y'all have a wonderful evening. Good night. Uh, goodbye, because I'll be back.